Hi, in this video we're going to learn about a joint probability density function for the variables x and y. In particular, we're going to look at a problem where we're going to use the joint density function in, F, in x and y to solve for a probability over a given region of interest. So here's the particular example we're looking at. Uh, let the random variable x denote the time until a computer server connects to your machine, and let the random variable y denote the time until the server authorizes you as a valid user. Now each of these random variables measures the wait time from a common starting point, and we're given the uh, extra condition that the random variable y is greater than the random variable x. Um, below, I've, I've defined um, the region of the overall region of interest where both x and y can be defined. Um, since they are wait times, we know both x can be positive and y can be positive. It doesn't make sense for these to be uh, negative random variables. So both x and y are positive, and we have the extra condition that um, x is actually less than y. So what I've done here is um, actually drawn in the region of interest here. And I want to consider the region where y is greater than the random variable x. So that's going to be the entire region above the line y equals x. So what would happen, here is my uh, joint probability density function. If we were to integrate the joint probability density function over this region of interest, it's going to integrate to 1. Because actually, um, what this double integral is doing is really finding the volume of this surface um, over the region that we've defined in this picture. So I think another thing that's important, when we switch to um, a bivariate distribution, we're finding volumes now of these functions over a given um, region of interest or area. So this is, in, in one way, if you want to think of it, almost my height function. And then we're bounding it um, over a certain region. And then we're finding that volume over that bounded region. So now that we've actually figured out the region of interest, we're, we're asked to determine a probability. We're trying to find the probability that x is less than 1,000 and y is less than 2,000. And so here's another reason. I think this picture is so important. If we can draw this area um, into this figure, then it's going to help us set up our double integral for computing the probability. So we want x is less than 1,000. So let's go ahead and draw in the line x equals 1,000. And we'll draw in the line y equals 2,000. And we're interested in x is less than 1,000. So that's to the left. And y is less than 2,000. That's below. So this is our overall region of interest. So when we go to set up our double integral, we're integrating um, in this little figure right here. So let's carry that thought into the next slide. Um, let me draw that again. So um, x's were less than 1,000 and y's were less than 2,000. And this was our region of interest for our double integral. So let's set up the double integral then to find the probability that x is less than 1,000 and y is less than 2,000. So I'm going to start with my x's. Um, so I'm going to let my outer integral be in x's. And you can see in this little region that my x's go from 0 to 1,000. So x's here will go to, from 0 to 1,000. OK, so for these x's from 0 to 1,000, let's figure out what happens with our y variable. So for x's in that region, y is going from this line up to, excuse me, up to the line 2,000. So this right here is y equals x. So if I pick any x in this region, my y's go from this line up to the line y equals 2,000. So that helps me set my bounds right here at y equals x to y equals 2,000. And the thing that I'm actually uh, integrating then is my joint density function. So let me just write that in here, f of x, y of x comma y. Um, the inner integral is in y, so this is dy. And the outer integral is in x's, so this is dx. So at this point, I really feel like we've done the hard part of the problem. Setting up this double integral is definitely uh, the part that most people have trouble with. And now the rest is just pure integration. Um, and sometimes we can use you know, uh, mathematical software packages to help redo th this, or we can do it by hand. But um, let me just go ahead and uh, give you, I've already worked this out. Um, I already have integrated the inner integral. And so let me go ahead and write that out. And then we'll find uh, the probability of just uh, integrating over the second integral. So let's, let's go ahead and see. When I integrate this inner integral, 
um, I actually get, uh, on the outside we still have x going from 0 to 1,000, but when I integrate with respect to y, I get 0 0.003 times, um, let me see here, e to the negative 0.003x minus e to the negative 4 times e to the negative 0.001x, and this is dx. And so now this is a, just an integral in x's. Um, I can actually do that also. And then um, if we go ahead and take the integrand and evaluate it at 1,000 and 1,000, I'll get my final probability, which is 0.915. Okay, so I haven't spent a lot of time in the integrating here, but in my mind, I, th I think the problem um, that you're going to have, if any, is setting up this double integral. And I really think, again, taking the time at the very beginning of the problem to set up your region of interest is really going to help with that double integral because sometimes the pictures can be quite tricky and I think just having it sketched out can easily help you see what those double bounds are going to be on that integral. So I hope this has helped you with uh, bivariate distributions and looking at joint density functions over a region and I hope at least to have um, convinced you somewhat that a picture is very important in finding these probabilities.